The following is an exclusive presentation of BYU Athletics in association with BYU Broadcasting. It's time for BYU Women's Soccer, live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Deep cross, headed toward Freeman in! A goal by Elise Blake, and the Cougars open up on top! This is Cougar Pre-Match Live. Coming up, we'll hear from head coach Jennifer Rockwood, and we'll get a look at today's starting lineups. Let's begin our coverage of BYU Women's Soccer and join your host, Jason Shepard. Good evening, BYU soccer fans. Welcome into Cougar Pre-Match Live. Tonight, your fifth-ranked BYU Cougars wrapping up non-conference play as they host the UC Irvine and Eaters here at Southfield in Provo. My name is Jason Shepard, joined as always by former Cougar Avery Walker. Avery, BYU enters tonight's game unbeaten at 9-0. The Cougars' latest victory came Thursday night, a 3-0 shutout at Long Beach State. Tonight, as I mentioned, also the final non-conference game for BYU. The Cougars begin WCC play next Saturday afternoon at Santa Clara. Now, Irvine has struggled mightily this season, coming in at 1-8. The Cougars lead the all-time series 3-1, the last matchup being back in 2013. Ave, even though Irvine has only one victory on the season, BYU's mindset is that this is the team that comes up next. they got to take care of business. A hundred percent. I know playing for Jen Rockwood and I know kind of traveling with these girls, they always talk about, they honestly don't even know what team they're playing after the next team, right? They're always focused on just this one game ahead of them. And I think knowing that um, UC Irvine has struggled a lot really just lights a fire under BYU, knowing that if they lose this game, it would really hurt their RPI. It's one of those must wins. Absolutely. And while the temperature may cool off quite a bit, expecting temps in the 60s tonight, for tonight's game even though there are clouds around us we are not expecting any precipitation which is certainly good news it should be a fantastic evening for BYU women's soccer coming up next you're going to hear from the head coach of the Cougars Jennifer Rockwood Cougar pre-match live continues next on the new skin BYU sports network this is Cougar pre-match live it's time to get the scoop on today's match from head coach Jennifer Rockwood Let's rejoin your host, Jason Shepard. Welcome back to Southfield in Provo, Utah. Jason Shepard and Avery Walker with you, getting you ready for BYU, fifth ranked in the country, taking on the Anteaters of UC Irvine. It's now time for our pre-match interview with BYU head coach Jennifer Rockwood, brought to you as always by Zions Bank. For banking that helps you tackle every financial challenge, Zions Bank is for you. I caught up with Coach Rockwood before tonight's matchup. Here's our conversation. Before we focus on tonight's matchup with uh, with UC Irvine, let's look back on Long Beach State as you continue through the Big West. Mm-hmm. What were your overall thoughts on the uh, on the win over the beach, as they like to call it? You know, uh, that's a tough place to play. You know, we've played there over the years, and I think we were only two and two. So, um, you know, Mauricio always has a tough team, and they're always a great competition. They got us last year here at Southfield. Um, so we knew we'd have our hands full. They're always a good team with great players. But our, our team, again, has just proven to be very consistent in uh, our efforts in the start and, and problem solvers once we get out there. You know, we didn't score um, at halftime, but we still had a lot of the run of play. But it wasn't as clean as we would have liked. But uh, we just said, let's clean things up. Um, and get some shots off and, uh, you know, believe that it's going to go in. And then, you know, we had some people off the bench come in and get the goals. And uh, just overall, it's a tough place to play. But I thought we uh, had a great game, especially the second half. We really turned it up. Well, in speaking of the second half, I was noticing of the 25 goals that BYU has scored on the season, 17 have come in the second half. Mm -hmm. Why has this team been such a good second half team? Um, I think there's a couple reasons. I think first and foremost is our, our start. You know, we are committed to getting after our opponent nice and early. You know, our goal is to try and score first and score early. Um, it, it has happened some, um, but if it doesn't happen by halftime, I think um, the girls just know that it's going to come. And I think also that we wear our opponents down because of our high pressure, because we're continually attacking. Um, the second half comes around, and um, we have some fresh legs because we've been able to go to our bench without slowing down uh, our run of play or our press. And uh, and it does. It, it's hard. I would think it'd be hard to keep up with us. And so uh, I think that's what happened at Long Beach. You know, they were still in the game. We hadn't scored yet. And anytime, you know, you don't put a couple in, your opponents are still in the game. And um, I think we were just able to wear them down. When you look at the non-conference, tonight's game will wrap up non-conference play. You guys will begin. WCC play next week. When you look back on the non-conference, how do you think it has prepared you for what you will face in the West Coast? 
Uh, I think it's prepared us very well. I mean, that's kind of why we always schedule a challenging uh, non-conference schedule to kind of see where we are. We've, we've you know, gone to some different conferences. We've uh, played on the road a lot. We've been in different environments um, and have really reacted well. I think it kind of goes back to the maturity and the leadership and experience of our team um, to get the great results. I think we've also just really tried to take a game at a time and learn and it's been great to learn some lessons uh, after winning. You know, after some mistakes that we've made, we've been able to address them, um, even though we've got results. So I think that the girls are continually building and getting stronger and better. We've seen a mixture of different formations and different styles of play, um, and that will be very useful for us in solving issues in our conference. UC Irvine comes in with a record of 1-8. and eight. I know they're not playing uh, the type of soccer they would like to be playing at this point. What, what's the scouting report on the Ant Eaters? Um, you know, Irvine, uh, they've done well, really well the last few years, uh, uh, down this year with some results. But uh, I think similar to Long Beach, they've got a lot of talent. They're trying to put things together before they start conference. I'm sure uh, they're one of the favorites in their conference as they get going. Um, but we just have to, you know, not worry what they've done in the past and, and not be really concerned uh, with what we've done in the past. Appreciate what we've accomplished, but doesn't mean anything right now, only the game in front of us. So I think just, just focusing on, on what we do, uh, knowing that we have to play at our very best, expect results. Everybody healthy tonight? Everybody expected to be in the, the starting 11? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll go with the same starting group. Uh, girls have been really resilient. We've, we've tried to rest up in recovery as best we can um, with a lot of the travel, three games in a week, uh, and then a quick turnaround at Long Beach. But uh, uh, I think we're great. Um, girls are anxious. We haven't been on Southfield. Uh, that was kind of the talk this morning uh, in our training was they're just really anxious to get back on Southfield in front of our fans. Coach, thanks for taking a few minutes, and uh, good luck tonight. All right, thank you. That was the head coach of the BYU Cougars, Jennifer Rockwood. Our pregame conversation always brought to you by Zions Bank. And I want to ask you, Avery, same question I asked Coach Rockwood. We were talking about the second half scoring for BYU. 25 goals scored by the Cougars this season. 17 have come in the second half. Why do you think this team is able to find such a rhythm in the second 45? You know, I I know Jen talked about this a little bit too. And as a player, I think it's a little bit frustrating when you you want to go out and you want this want to set the tone as early as possible that you're here to win but I think a, there's a lot of time especially for BYU I mean even when I was playing the conversation was kind of like if we were tied 0-0 coming out of halftime it was you know hey we're a second half team anyway like let's go light this up and so I think where these girls it's it's obviously something that takes them maybe a little while too long to kind of get their rhythm and get figure out who's going to take the ball into the back of the net um it's also a bit of maturity i think sometimes we have really young players in when you're playing in club you often have in high school you often have a lot of opportunities especially when you're a rock star like these kids were coming out of high school um but in college you it sometimes take you takes you a couple of years to realize like when the other team gives you an opportunity that might be your only one so I think going into tonight, it's it's going to be one of those times where when you have your shot, you got to take it, and it has to be on frame. When we come back, my conversation with midfielder Ashton Brockbank. This is Cougar Pre-Match Live. You're listening to BYU Women's Soccer on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. It's time to hear from the Cougars themselves as we head back to the broadcast booth for our pre-match player interview. Here's Jason Shepard. Welcome back to Southfield on the campus of Brigham Young University in Provo, Utah. My name is Jason Shepard, joined by former Cougar Avery Walker. Tonight, your fifth-ranked BYU Cougars hosting the Anteaters of UC Irvine. This is the final non-conference game for BYU. West Coast Conference action beginning next week on the road at Santa Clara. Now, Ashton Brockbank has played in all of BYU's nine games this season, which is Ashton's sophomore season. When Jamie Shepard missed the game at Kansas, Ashton got the start. She has two goals on the year, both against Southern Utah, and she's provided great minutes when called upon. I spoke with Ashton just a few minutes ago. Here's our chat. You guys certainly on a roll. Everybody's having fun. You guys are winning. How's this start to the year been for you? It's been really fun. I mean, with all the success, I feel like it just keeps becoming more fun, getting better and better, and we're just working hard and ready to go. Everybody I've talked to, and for the most part, everybody's kind of answered the same way, but there are variations. What do you think has been the key to this team's success so far? Um, Honestly, I think it just started from the beginning. Like, freshmen coming in, 
they were ready to work hard. I think over the summer we were ready to work hard. And we really wanted to make this season count. And so I think just like from the get-go, we just were ready to make a statement. When you're shopping for a home and you find one you love, you want to make your you move fast. Zion's Bank can count? help. Introducing yeah. Zip Mortgage. I mean, it's been super fun. I feel like having that success, I feel like I've been able to be a part of that success with minutes and playing time and all that, so it's been really good. That's one of the things I wanted to ask you, because last year you, you played in 10 games. Tonight will be your 10th game. Yeah. So just the, the fact that you're getting more minutes and more playing time, how has that changed How has that changed your experience? I don't know. I just think, like, every time I step out on the field, like, I'm just super grateful to be here at BYU. I mean, it's always been a dream. So, I mean, any minute that I can get, I just want to go out, prove that I should be on the field, and make it count. Well, and you've been able to – you started at Kansas. You've got two goals, both against Southern Utah. Kind of explain to, to people what this what this midfield group is like. And, and it's not just that position. It's it's every position. Anytime somebody comes in as a substitution, the level of play stays at such a high level. That has got to be such a fun system to play in. Yeah, I mean, Jen tells us all the time that our bench is super deep and we have so much talent. So it's like whenever we get the opportunity to go out on the field – we just want to work hard, prove that we can play in that spot. And I think our whole team is super talented, so it just works whenever she throws anybody out there. You guys are wrapping up non-conference with the game tonight against UC Irvine. If you look back on your non-conference as a whole, um, how do you think that's prepared you for what you will see uh, next week when you start conference play? Um, I just think like taking it game by game and knowing who you're going to go out and play in that like, our next game is going to be our hardest com opponent, and we're just ready to, I mean, see what they're going to bring to us, but then we're going to match that and then take it to a whole other level. What do you guys know about UC Irvine? From a record standpoint, one win, eight losses. This is not a team from a statistical standpoint that's playing really good soccer. But like you said, you have to approach every team as if that's the team. we got to have our best game ready to go. I think they prepare us really well for each game that's coming up, and – Yes, we learn like how they kind of play, how they switch the field, who their best players are, kind of like that. So I think like knowing that helps us a lot, but we're just there to play our game and to make it count. What's been the, the most fun thing you've done with your teammates so far this season? I know you guys do the, the dance routines. I know that's fun. And, and you, guys, you guys have a lot of really cool things you guys do as a group, which I think is fun, uh, that you guys are that close. What's some of the fun things that you've been able to experience so far this year? Honestly, just hanging out with everybody. I mean, in the locker room or on the road. Either way, we're all just super, super close friends. We have good memories. We're super funny together. Um, those dances definitely <laughs> bond us closer. And I don't know, just as a team whole, we're all really good friends. How much do you think that translates onto the pitch in terms of the fact that you guys get along? I think it translates very, very much. I think you can see that our team culture is really awesome, and because we're all friends, we're all supporting one another, even if we're starting or we're not starting. We're happy for who's out on the field and who's getting those minutes and who's scoring and who's making an awesome save or defense-wise. Like We're all just cheering everybody on. Well, it's certainly uh, been a fun team to watch, uh, and I appreciate you taking a few minutes, and good luck tonight against the Ant Eaters. Thank you. That's Ashton Brockbank. Appreciate Ashton taking a few minutes before tonight's game. When we come back, Irvine head coach Scott Juniper. You're going to love his accent, I promise. That's next on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Welcome back to Cougar Pre-Match Live, getting you ready for BYU women's soccer. For more pre-match coverage, here's Avery Walker and Jason Shepard. Coming to you live from Southfield. On the campus of Brigham Young University, number five BYU and the Anteaters of UC Irvine. Irvine coached by Scott Juniper in his 13th season with the Anteaters. I talked with the coach just a few moments ago. Coach, how would you describe how the season has gone for you guys thus far? Well, I think anyone that sees, uh, sees our record uh, will start to wonder uh, exactly that, you know. Uh, but I think the, the reality is that we've played some of the, uh, I think we've played one of the toughest schedules in the country. Um, almost all the teams we've played are Power 5 schools. Uh, we've taken bold trips out to Virginia, Arizona, um, and then here. Uh, and I think that with a young team, uh, we're learning a lot of lessons. Uh, we, we, we've been focused on getting better every single game. 
Um, and I feel like uh, what, we're, what we're trying to stay focused on is the spirit in the locker room, uh, how people are arriving at practice every day. Are we getting better every day? Um, and hopefully things will things will turn around on that on the the numbers on the uh, the record there. So how is that going in terms of the culture and keeping that morale up? Well, I think we just got what we what we're doing is we're just we're just embracing the idea that we're all human beings, and at the end of a game, and you've, if you've lost a game, it doesn't matter how you lose it, uh, people are going to be upset, and that's okay, and it's okay for them to have uh, have some time when they're upset about it, and everyone deals with it differently. Um, but at some point, everyone's got to get over themselves, and uh, we've got to get back to work, and that's kind of been the that's kind of been the process, you know. So give the team a little bit of time, uh, but don't you know when they wake up the next morning, they show up for practice, they better be ready to go. So a lot of times, you know, coaches will schedule the non-conference to prepare you for conference play. What you guys have faced in your non-conference, how do you think that will help you as you get into Big West play? Well, it pushes you. You don't get away with any fluff against the teams that we've played. There's, you, you, can't, you can't prepare quite well. You can't prepare really well. You've got to prepare every aspect of your game. Um, and if you don't, you're going to get found out. You know, there's been games where we've had a poor start to the game. There's been, you know, wobbles in the middle of the second half. Um, so it's just stringing everything together. So it's forced everybody to take a long, hard look at everything and fix mistakes. You know, and I think our young team has grown up a lot. You know, they've grown up a lot in video sessions. They've grown up in uh, practice sessions. And uh, everyone's agreed that we're going we're gonna to coach them the way we need to coach them to get through the tough games. Um, and I think, or we hope, that the things that we've put right are going to stand us in good stead. And we've got to make sure that we continue to power through uh, when we start conference next Friday. From an on the pitch, from an on the pitch perspective, where do you feel like the team has has made the biggest strides? Well, it's been difficult. That's a different. That's a good question. It's we've played so many different styles of teams. We've, we, we're, we're solving different problems each game. So you know, you, you fix one thing, and then you're on, <laughs> then you're on to the next. So I think we've 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 addressed it front to back. You know, right the way through the squad, one through 35, everybody's improved. Um, I think we've got better at keeping the ball. Uh, I think we've got better at keeping the ball under pressure. Um, I think we've got better at um, uh, taking away some of the space from our opponents that play in different ways. We've learned uh, that when we see a different shape, we have to take away space in a different way. Uh, and then it's consistency. We've become more and more consistent. You know, when we got, uh, when you get beat uh, at Virginia 7-0, uh, we, we didn't do much right for many minutes of that game. Uh, but you compare that with losing 1-0 to Vanderbilt, 1-0 to Cal, 1-0 to UCF. We were very good in all three of those games for, you know, 89 and a half minutes. So uh, I think it's the consistency that we're, that we're getting there. Well, and now you get the number five team in the country in BYU. What are your thoughts on the Cougars? Well, we're just excited. Um, it's a fantastic team, one of the best teams in the country um, and one of the best home records in the country. So I'm not sure there's a tougher game in the country than the one we're playing tonight, frankly. And uh, So we, you know, we've got a lot of respect for BYU um, we know some of their players really well uh, we've worked very very hard to understand some of the nuances of the way that they're playing particularly this year uh, we've got a strategy we've got a plan to, to try and take away some of the big threats and uh, see, if, see if we can't turn it around in our favour a little bit through there as well appreciate the time thank you so much that was UC Irvine head coach Scott Juniper. Appreciate him taking a few minutes before tonight's match. It's time now for Wilner and O'Reilly's Laws of the Game feature. Brought to you by Wilner and O'Reilly, immigration solutions in Utah and abroad at wilneroreilly.com. Here's our question tonight. May a player who has been removed from the game for an equipment change return? That answer is next, as well as starting lineups and the opening kick. This is Cougar Pre-Match Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Welcome back to Cougar Pre-Match Live, getting you ready for BYU women's soccer. For more pre-match coverage, here's Avery Walker and Jason Shepard. Welcome back to Southfield at Brigham Young University. Starting lineups and the opening kick coming your way in just a few minutes. It's good to know our field mic is working. The officials are standing right in front of our field mic, so... So let's hope everything. <laughs> I might just for just for safety, I may want to just turn the uh, the crowd mic down just a little bit. Yeah, I don't just, know. If just to be safe. Weird to be on the air. They may not. They may not want all of their conversations <laughs> to go over the air. Uh, our question tonight in our Wilner and O'Reilly Laws of the Game feature is this: May a player who has been removed from the game for an equipment change return? According to the rule book, yes. If the player was not substituted for while completing the equipment change, the player may return at the next stoppage in play. 
The answer would be no if another player was submitted for the player with the equipment change. The original player may not re-enter the game in the period in which he or she was replaced. And that's Laws of the Game, brought to you by Wilner and O'Reilly. We've got a couple of minutes before we get to the starting lineup here. Wanted to ask you, certainly non-conference scheduling is done to prepare a team for their conference season. How do you think BYU, because BYU has certainly they've beaten everybody they face to this point. You have wins over the SEC. You have wins over the Pac-12, over the Big 12. And now your first game out of the box in the WCC is next week. Everything has gone quiet. This may be the national anthem. I don't think the national anthem is quite yet. I think this is our... Our pregame. Okay, well, everything got really quiet all of a sudden. How do you think the the non-conference has prepared this team for right out of the gate facing a Santa Clara team that you know is going to be really good on the road? Oh, I I'm just very excited to see you know how they can handle and take what they've learned from preseason. Like you mentioned, they've played in very powerful conferences, and you know with it's one thing that Jen mentioned to us um, in a couple of pre-games was that it's really important for these girls to have a strong preseason. She often schedules really tough teams before we go into the WCC because a lot of the teams in the WCC aren't as strong RPI-wise. So going into conference playing as a team like Santa Clara first, which is typically the team that you know is always in the mix for the conference championship along with Pepperdine, it's going to be a really great going to be a really great matchup for the nation to kind of take a look at how the WCC will contend and what BYU is is really made of because I know that you know typically BYU struggles on the road at Santa Clara they've never won at Santa Clara but they've been able to do well against Santa Clara at Southfield yeah and this is this is one of those opportunities certainly there's one game to go before we can even worry about West Coast Conference play Uh, but this is a team that is focused is determined and they are on a roll right now uh, this is an exciting team to watch. It is a fun scheme and, and a brand of soccer. They play a, a fun, up-tempo, attacking style, and, and it causes fits for opponents. And uh, I, I think uh, I think UC Irvine knows what they're up against tonight. Yeah, I know that um, UC Irvine's coach was talking about how if you look a little more closely at their record, you can you can see that they were close in these games, and their their record doesn't necessarily sh- reflect how quickly. Um, they were able to go down and you know in, in wins there, but going forward, you know, this is the thing that I love the most about soccer. We were actually talking about this the other day. You know, in the NBA, the best team always wins in the finals because there's seven games, right? It's hard to beat the, a better team seven times, but in soccer, it's it's so cool because you really do have to put a game together because anything can happen, and I think that's that's something Jeremy Jordan was talking about earlier today in 2013. It was my freshman year. We were ranked sixth, and we lost to UC Irvine, and we shouldn't have. So right. we're in for a good night, that's for sure. You're listening to BYU Women's Soccer on the new skin, BYU Sports Network.